Aren't you a little big for a boss pedal? Have you ever looked at all the gear musicians use and wonder, how does it all work? My name's Dustin and my family and I are setting out on a quest to inspire both adult and kid musicians to create new sounds together and learn all about what it takes to produce great music. We'd like to invite you along on the journey as we explore the gear professional studios, musicians, and hobbyists use to create their art. We'll take a close-up look at the gear and ask, What's this button do? Hello and welcome to this week's episode of What's This Button Do? I'm your host, Dustin, and this week we are going to be taking a look at a pedal that has been all over YouTube lately. I am talking, of course, about the Boss DM-101. Now, this was announced a few weeks back, um, and we saw a flood of content come out on YouTube. Tons of the, you know, that pedal show, several of the major YouTubers out there that do demos had this up on their site right away talking about it. Um, I got super excited. I had just received the Boss uh, EVH, and I'm sure some of you have seen that. If not, go back, watch the episode we did a few weeks ago on it, um, and I was so blown away with it. Being a person who plays a stereo rig, and that pedal was so set up as a beautiful stereo delay, but it was a digital delay. So when I saw the announcement of the new DM-101, I got super excited. For those that don't know, the 101 is based on the original DM-1, which is one of Boss's uh, first delays and one of the most beautiful sounding analog delays out there. And there's been tons of recreations of it over the years. Um, but it uh, on Reverb now, those are selling for you know twelve, thirteen hundred dollars. So they've just really become kind of unobtainable. So to have Boss go back and reissue it, but reissue it in such a massive scale was huge news. So I thought it'd be great. I ordered one in, um, had to wait a little while for it to get here, and I was just excited. So I kept reading, watching all the demos that were out there, getting more and more excited every day. And then the box arrived yesterday, and I was so stoked. Ripped it open, threw it on the board, and started digging into it, and I realized there are a lot of things that people are not talking about on their demos for the most part that I think are very important to know about for those that are looking at buying this pedal. So today that's what we're gonna do is we're not gonna go through every single sound sample on here. I'm gonna show you some of my favorites and, and show you what I've learned about it, but we're gonna talk about the pros and the cons of this pedal because I do think there's some things that you need to know about it. So join me over at the pedal board real quick and let's start taking a dive into it. I'm gonna show you the pedal itself before we get into the sounds. So let's hop over to the pedal board and take a look at that real quick. All right, we're gonna start off just taking a look at the pedal itself because there's a lot going on here. And I want you to see how this is the same and different than the old uh, DM-101, or the original DM-1 from Boss. Um, so the first thing, if any of you are familiar with the original DM-1, what you'll see is there's the three knobs from the original unit are represented here. You have delay time, you have intensity, and you have delay volume. On the original, it was called mix, um, but it essentially does the same thing. By taking the volume all the way to the minimum, you, you take it out of the mix, and the more you bring up, the more you're gonna hear it in the mix. So essentially the same thing. Uh, it doesn't have the little preamp switch that the old one had. Um, that was something that was built into the old unit. But what you do get is a lot more. First of all, tap tempo with tap division controls, and these are very, very important. Having your hole, your quarter, your dot um, notes up here, it is important to set that based on what you're gonna be doing. There is a lot of variation here, so for those who aren't familiar with musical time signatures, you will want to study that a little bit before you start messing around with this pedal because you'll notice really right away, depending on the settings that you're set on, um, you can get this delay out of control really quickly. Um, then, what you've got in the middle here is you've got the classic mode, which is the original DM-101. You've got, uh, or your original DM-1. You've got your vintage mode. You've got modern sounding delays. And then there's all these other variations here. What they've basically done is jam-packed a ton of different analog delays. And they're using what's called a bucket brigade chip, the BBD chip. Now, these chips are expensive to manufacture. Um, and the some of the best delays out there have always used these BBD chips. This has eight of them in there. So to give you an idea, just the base cost on this pedal alone, just to manufacture this pedal is more expensive than any other Boss pedal out there that I'm aware of. Um, this is a very, very, very expensive pedal to manufacture just based on those chips alone. But 
they use those chips to be able to create multiple delay algorithms and to be able to really, really dial in the sound of each of these. So when we get into multi-head mode in a little bit, you're gonna see you can essentially replicate kind of like an old echo rec, um, having multiple heads going at different times and they're using those delay chips to create each, each individual head, which is a really, really, really exciting uh, thing. And then what they've done over on this side is they've added a modulation system in here. So you can actually, if you uh, ever played a old, EHX uh, Memory Man. One of the coolest things about the Memory Man delay was there was a little bit of modulation moving in there, so your delays never sound perfect. They always sounded like there was a little bit of movement in there. Um, this essentially allows you to add that movement, that motion, to any of the delays that are in here. And then the, the variation knob is gonna change it. It has different parameters based on what knob you have here. This variation will do different things from selecting the heads that are being used to selecting delay times. It does a lot of different uh, processes. So there's an instruction manual online that actually goes through each one of those processes and tells you what that knob is doing for each specific thing. We'll talk about a little bit of that when we get into sounds here in a little bit. Now, all this is great. This, this is fun so far. Now we're going to get into the part that I am disappointed by right off the bat. So when I turn this around, what you're going to see is there is a single input, two outputs, and a controller expression, and then a MIDI in section. Right off the bat, this upset me. So, any of you who watched the demo that I did on the new Boss SDE a few weeks ago know I was so excited because Eddie Van Halen loved a good wet, dry, wet rig. And I have always played a stereo rig or a wet, dry, wet. I, I believe in it. I love the sound of it. I think it's one of the most phenomenal sounds in guitar. Um, so I was so excited when Boss started to embrace stereo. So for instance, a few, uh, well, I think it was last year, the RE202 came out. And the RE202, when you see this, on the back side of it, you've got a left and right input, a left and right output, and then your control expression. These are the same form factor, same design, but you'll notice, sorry for that whack there, you'll notice this does not have the second input in there. Now what this tells me, unfortunately, by having a single input and then two output channels here, you've essentially said to me, hey Dustin, I know you love that new Boss SDE, but if you've got that on your board and you're using it for stereo or wet dry wet rig, you can no longer use this delay machine. And the reasoning being is this would have to be number one, your first pedal in a stereo chain so whenever you're about to split off to stereo, if you wanted to have some stereo effects before this, you're not going to be able to because only one input is going to be able to come into this and then everything out there is going to be split into stereo. So you've already told me that now I have to use this as the first pedal in a stereo chain. And this is unfortunately a problem that a lot of companies have. A lot of the old Strymon pedals, um, some of the old Boss pedals, several of the old manufactured delays all had one input, two outputs. And every time I see that, it just ruins it for me because I'm like, well, I can't use it because I've got one of my favorite pedals has that, unfortunately. So that's the start of my stereo chain. I can't do anything after that. I can't start adding other things to it. So you've already lost me on that part of it. Not being able to do that as a stereo player, that is frustrating, especially when I know the capability is there because the Boss RE202 has those. So the problem is, I am sure, is in the processing power and being able to do everything. It's a lot easier and a lot cheaper for Boss to do the DM101 as a single input because if you've got two true stereo channels and you're trying to process those, it's a lot more processing power. It would have been more expensive to manufacture it. So this would have probably gone from a $500 pedal to an $800 pedal. I get it, but... I also think if you're gonna make something like this and you're really gonna tout the stereo capabilities, I, I think that needs to be said and I don't think anybody's really talking about that right now. Um, I, I hate to say it, but that is a deal breaker for me. I really find that to be an annoying part of this to, to not have that stereo ends going into there. I think that's a, a really bad call on Boss's part. Um, so first negative right there out the gate before we've even hooked it up. I see that as a potential issue. The other reason that this hurts is if you're doing a wet, dry, wet rig, um, like I typically do, 
um, on that boss SDE, there was also a direct out. So there's a direct out that's going to my center amp. So that's your dry channel, right? That's where none of the effects are going to be processed. So my initial thought was, okay, well, we could stick this before that Boss SDE. And I'm going to show you what that sounds like in a few minutes. Um, but if you put it before, because the Boss SDE does have two stereo ins going into it. So I could run the two stereo outs here into that and make this the first pedal in my stereo chain, right? The problem with doing that is now when it come, the sound comes out of this machine, both of those left and right are now essentially what we call a wet effect. They both have the delay going to them. So when I go into the Boss SDE, the direct sound that is coming out of the Boss SDE is now also what the, I think it's the left channel in this has been doing. So whenever you hear a wet dry wet with this running in front of it, you're gonna hear the center channel and the left channel have that delay both on them and then the right channel is gonna have its own delay and that's gonna make everything sound off. I know that's a little confusing, so let's hop into the actual sounds. I'll play some for you so you can hear what that sounds like. Okay, so the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna take a look at what this sounds like in stereo. So I have set up the DM101 in front of the Boss SDE3000. Like I said before, it has to be the first in a chain if you're gonna do stereo because it only has one input. So we're gonna put that before the SDE3000 and I'm gonna start off with just the left and the right channels on. So let me let you hear what that sounds like clean. This is just my clean tone. We'll be using my uh, Grez Mendocino, just regular guitar here. Um, so you can kind of hear just some nice clean tones with it, all right? So what you're gonna hear is with the left and the right, when I turn this on, let's, we're in the wide mode now, which is a great version. That's one of their modes where it's supposed to widen the stereo sound. So let's hear. And what it's doing is it's making the delay on one side at a different time. Getting clean versus you can hear how it's making that sound kind of a little back and forth. And then dual mode kind of uses that same idea. I can take that down just a little bit. I kind of like the sound on wide. And the more you spread the variation knob out, you can hear that widen up. And then pan, we should pan to left and right. Almost not quite ping pong delay like, but if we have it all the way at max, you can kind of hear how it's. So really nice sounding delays in stereo but I want you to hear what you're missing out on. So first of all, the thing I'm noticing in this because it is a uh, initially mono path going into a stereo split at the end, it doesn't get as wide as some of the pedals that are specifically designed for true stereo, like a Mr. Black Supermoon, a Polyphrase Von Gon. Um, in fact, here, I'll turn on a Von Gon just so you can see the difference between it. So this is a Von Gon in stereo, and listen to the difference. You can hear how wide that is. Versus. See how it just sounds a little bit wider? This will become very apparent now with the problem that I have with this pedal is that when we add in our center channel, now I'm gonna add in that dry channel coming out of the Boss SDE 3000. What you're gonna hear now is because everything is coming out of that DM101, it's now muddying up the waters, if you will, on the center channel. The center is no longer clean, so here's what you hear. So you can hear that middle channel. So the reflections that you're hearing on the left are also in the center channel. So the right side feels just a little quieter. By way of comparison, let me turn on the Von Gun, which is after the SD3000, so the center channel is not gonna have that dry. Listen to how wide this sounds when I play it.
See, having that clean center channel allows that left side reflection to really shine, and that's something you just can't get with the DM101. But let's take a look at this as a single channel delay and see what we get out of there. I'm gonna hop over to the board and we'll set that up for that. We've talked a lot about what I don't like. Now let's talk about what I do like. The first thing that we're gonna look at here is you've got 12 individual delays built into one box and there is a lot to love about that. Like I talked about at the intro, you've got your three original knobs from the DM101 that give you your time, your levels and your intensity, which is a lot like the repeats on it. But having all these little variation knobs, the extra bit of information here and the extra little tweaks that we can do to these effects are really cool. So we're gonna start off in classic mode and this is that old school just analog delay mode, just so you can hear what it sounds like. And we're just running in mono, nothing fancy, no stereo sounds here, just a good straight mono analog delay. And when we add a little modulation, we almost get into the old school like EHX uh, Memory Man. I love that. I just think it sounds beautiful. It's a really cool, neat way to do it. And this variation knob allows you a lot of different waveforms. And I like when you get to this upper level of the variation, it almost sounds like there's a little tape involved and that tape is warped a little. And that's all being done with those bucket brigade chips. That's the really cool thing. And that's what those BBD chips allow you to do is this cool, funky, crazy processing on the sound to make it sound so unique. Um, so there is this beauty in analog delays that really can't be copied by a digital delay. Um, let's take a look at the vintage mode because this is a lot like a DM2, uh, so just a little bit. Got a really cool sound to it. Let's take it back to the normal waveform. Let's, I'm gonna play with the delay time a little bit. I've always loved this sound. It's darker, the repeats are a little bit darker. That sound on the back end is a little bit darker sounding, but I love that. And by way of comparison, if we go to modern, this is gonna sound a little brighter. Hear how the end of those repeats just sounds slightly brighter than if we do that same thing here. Just a little bit different depth on those repeats. Now, multi-head, this is where I was really impressed because I was expecting this to be a lot like an RE202, but really it's closer to the sound that I get from like an echo rec kind of style. So if I go to my variation knobs here, your variations allow you to change which heads are being replicated here. So like I'm gonna use head one and three. can make it sound kind of like it's that that uh, tape is like an old warped tape a little bit let's go back to my one and three see how that chorus just gives a little bit of a little warpage there if we take this back and we go to like one four four is your longest delay Just, I love that sound, I think it's beautiful. I think they do a really good job of. Great replication. I think for being a, a analog delay, trying to copy that multi-head drum echo sound does a fantastic job. Now your non-linear is a little bit different uh, kind of style to it. It's okay for me, um, it's a reverse delay. And when you bring the variation knob further up, it gives a little bit more space in between those uh, reflections.
Now, I love a good reverse delay. Um, one of my favorites is the Earthquaker Devices Avalanche Run. I think that is just absolutely unbeatable. Is this as good as the Avalanche Run? Nah, it's okay. Um, it's beautiful. But the Earthquaker Devices uh, has a wider stereo field, um, and it also does this kind of cool thing with reverb mixed in, so it, it's hard to simulate that in the same environment. But really nice non-layering delay, I think for a, for a reverse delay, it's actually pretty darn good. Um, the ambience mode. Kind of gives it almost a reverby sound. This would be great for a pad kind of delay. I think that sounds really good there. Where reflect is more of a true kind of just reverby sound. Especially if we tighten this up and tighten this up, you can get a... Sounds almost like a real tight spring. So if we loosen that up just a little bit, we get a little bit more ambience. All right, the last mode that I want to talk about is the doubling delay mode. And this is one I'm very, very excited about. For those who have been following the show since the beginning, you'll remember one of my earliest videos was on double tracking and how in the studio I love to use multiple tracks, vary them just slightly to create this really cool optical illusion sound. Um, but we also talked about the perils of double tracking being that when you create a duplicate of a track and it's the exact same, all you're really doing is just bumping the volume up on that. Um, and there's been a lot of pedals that have tried double tracking, but they all seem to do that same thing. They just create a carbon copy of what you're doing, layer it over the top of it, and it creates almost a fake, um, stagnant kind of sound to it that I'm not a big fan of. So I was really excited to see how this worked. So I want you to hear what this sounds like. We're gonna just play a chord there. Now I'm gonna add this. See, that makes it sound just a little bit thicker. You can hear that. It's a real simple, just real subtle delay behind it. And that's because we've got this turned down all the way and we've got no variance in there. So we're essentially just duplicating this track. But now let's add just a little bit of width here. And we're gonna add a little bit of motion, not much. And this variance knob, what this does is take it from 10 milliseconds to 20 milliseconds at its widest part. So when we put just a little bit of motion in there, Turn it off. You can hear how much that brings it up, thickens it a little bit. This will become very apparent when we add a little gain. Let's turn this off for a second. I'm gonna add in a big muff, so it's gonna get a little loud. Now let's thicken that. And let's try that with a single run here. I'm gonna just do a little note. Without it. thickens it up a little bit. It just lets it cut through a mix. And especially if you're in a full band atmosphere with a drummer playing and you really want to make a solo stand out, that's where doubling can really make it shine. And I love that they've got it in a pedal format where when you just need it to cut through that mix, you can and create a neat layer. I'd be very interested to see um, with a Vox amp, I bet using that and a little bit of tweaking, you could get a very Brian May, Queen kind of tone using that same kind of doubling delay. Really, really excited for this part of it.
Okay, so what's the verdict? Do we hate it? Do we love it? There's a lot going on here. Um, so let's talk about the cons first and get those out of the way. Um, I've already mentioned it. You know, my, my least favorite thing about this is the lack of the left and right ends. That's a problem for me. It's actually kind of a deal breaker for my personal board because I use the SDE 3000. These two do not play nice. And I hate that Boss put out two products so close to each other that don't like each other that ah, it drives me nuts. But I get it. It's not for everybody. Most pedal manufacturers are not going to be considering the wet, dry, wet player in most of their design elements. Um, however, I do think stereo is getting bigger and you're seeing a lot more people running stereo rigs. And especially with invention of things like Neural uh, and some of the DSP things out there um, where you can do amp simulation, it's really easy and getting cost effective to run in stereo. So I don't like that this has to be the first pedal in your stereo chain in order to work. Um, so a little bummed about that. Wish they would have put those two jacks in there. That's, that's your main con here. Uh, the second con, I think is because it's not that true stereo field. It's not creating that wider sound um, that you get even when you are running it in stereo mode. It's not getting quite as uh, wide and round as some of the other stereo delays that are out there. So when put up against them, um, I don't think it shines quite as much. Um, for me personally, I use the Sur Discovery. I absolutely love this. This is a, a mono, but it's fantastic. For stereo, I use the Spacerec uh, RE202 phenomenal pedal. I use the Mr. Black Supermoon Eclipse, which I think is one of the most ambient, wonderful sounding pedals out there. And I love the Strymon Volante for that kind of uh, uh, echo recce sound. When you run around that in stereo, these sound amazing. So for me personally, all of those, the sounds that are in there, I like a little bit more than the sounds in the DM-101. However, that gets me to the pros. So those four pedals I just showed you, retail at about $2,000. Now, I was able to get a lot of my favorite sounds from those pedals on the DM-101, albeit not quite as crisp and clear and, and grungy as I like them uh, that I can get from some of these other pedals, but they sound good, they sound great, and especially through one amp, I think they're gonna sound absolutely phenomenal. So from that aspect, Really, the price point at 500 bucks to give you 12 different all analog delays that all sound good. None of them, in my opinion, sounded like mind-blowingly great, but they all sound really, really good. And you're essentially paying 40 bucks a pedal to have 12 different pedals. And on top of that, they give you tap tempo on all 12 of those pedals. They give you a modulation and a chorus setting you can put on all 12 of those pedals. So if I was just a gigging musician who had one amplifier, a guitar, and maybe I had a small travel pedal board and I needed to put my tuner, my drive, my delay and my reverb on there, and that's all I had the room for, man, trying to stick all four of those delays or even a, a wealth of delays onto a board, it's gonna take up too much room. That DM-101 will give you a ton of delays and a ton of different sounds. It even gives you some of that ambient stuff. So if you have a reverb running after that, or maybe you've got a reverb built into your amp, you've really covered a lot of ground in one single pedal. That's a big benefit to me. So I'm gonna give that a giant plus in the pro column. I think the bang for your buck value that you get here as a mono player is really huge. If I wind up keeping this pedal in the collection, I doubt that I'll ever really run it stereo. I think most of the time I'm gonna be running it as a mono analog delay um, and just using it for that variety of analog sounds to run through the entire rig rather than trying to rig it up to, to sound good in stereo. I think that's really where it's gonna shine here. So is it for everybody? No. If you're a wet, dry, wet player, you're a stereo player, I'm gonna tell you right now, you can probably pass on this one. It's You're gonna be fighting it a lot, trying to make it sound good in your rig probably not the right pedal for you. But for any touring musicians that are looking for a kind of end all be all of analog delay and you want that kind of jack of all trades that can do a little bit of everything, this is definitely a fantastic pedal for you. I think you'll get a ton of variety out of here and be able to use it a lot, especially if you gotta keep your pedal board shrunk down to a minimum. This thing, oh, the, the sounds that you're getting are beautiful, they're crisp, they're, they've got that analog-y sound, and you can do a lot being able to add that modulation in. Like I said, it can cover all those old boss delays, but it can also kind of cover that old EHX uh, uh, 
memory man kind of sound to it it can do the echo rex it can do the tape echo sound there's a lot going on here so i i do absolutely think that there's value in it from that aspect well, I hope that helps you out in making a decision if this is the right pedal for you. For those who have played it before, if you've got some experience in it, found some sounds that you really love, I'd love to hear from you down below. Please comment in the comments. And as always, please uh, hit me up on Instagram. I'll put my link down here. It's what's this button do, Dustin. Feel free to follow me on there. Uh, make comments on there. Send me messages. Love to hear your experience with this. Love to hear how you're using it. And we'll be sure to share that with the group. So please comment down below. Next week, you might notice in the background here, there is a new kind of brownish amp. Um, I finally found the third amp for the wet, dry, wet rig. Uh, it is a steel string singer from Amplified Nation. Uh, so next week, we'll be going to take a little look at that. Uh, so please come back and join us next week. We'll have a little fun and talk about that some more. Thank you so much for coming out and spending the evening with us. I hope you have a wonderful week this week, and we'll see you soon. Take care.